Are you declaring an emergency, sir? Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week, a mysterious engine failure strikes the Electra. Joe races to England. How do I get to that airplane over there? And hits a meltdown on the way home. Ah. What tipped over? Oh, yeah. And a fluke accident threatens the one plane Buffalo can't afford to lose. Out of your hats, boy. What the f over? You just look at the tire, you can see it, but it's they're towing it, it's not good. On the buffalo ramp in Yellow Knight, oh, a big day is off to a very bad start. You gotta be able to clear the fing wheel, right? Mechanic James Dojak is wrestling with a flat tire on the morning DC3 freighter. It's minus 40 on the ramp, and the crew has towed the injured plane to the worst possible place. We gotta get out of the hair, so we gotta get this out of the way of the doors. We got a roadblock outside. Give him to work this morning, and there's a DC3 sitting there with a flat tire right in front of the hangar doors. Perhaps there are other spots to drag the plane back to other than in front of the hangar, but. The Lockheed Electra is Buffalo's main workhorse this winter. From non-stop fuel hauls to remote deliveries for the Army to transporting equipment for the Canadian Rangers who patrol the far north. Loads have been arriving before the props can even stop spinning. Today, the crew has a long backlog of freight that they need to pick up in the high Arctic for the Rangers. A whole bunch of weight today. Every minute the Electra sits, work is slipping away, and that won't sit well with the boss. I don't see the lights. We'll get ourselves set up here. 3.5 is our new minimum. Buffalo Joe is already on his way from Hay River. One side in and so the race is on. <coughs> but the brutal cold is only making it harder. Oh. The Oleos shock absorbers are fully extended and too frozen to slide back up. Sakes. So the new wheel won't fit. Jack is lifting up on one side. Well, we don't really have a choice now. We gotta go. That's it. <laughs> That's it? There's only one hope. Hey, Chuck. Go to mechanic Chuck Adams. Let the arrow push the struts up. With the pressure released, the oleos can finally retract. There you go. They've solved the problem. Sucks. But not in time to hide the holdup from Joe. Get a line on that. There it go. 
Lucky for James, Joe's got bigger problems to deal with inside the hangar. And now the Electra can finally head north on its mission for the Rangers. There's just one last detail. Hey, hang on there, Brian. The ground power unit, or GPU. This is an AC power unit that the aircraft needs to run its systems before the engines start. Today, we are going to places where ground power is not readily available. We have to bring our own power unit. One, two, three. The ground power unit was really awkward. Not easy to move around. It's heavy. Oh. Or is it straight there? Uh, it's pretty straight, yeah. Well, I don't know why that's so tough to get in there. Cost of the usual. Now, four hours late, Captain Brian Harrison, fellow Captain AJ DeCoast, and crew are finally on their way. Well, I guess we might as well go to work, eh? For now, we're just racing the clock, and you know what? It's very important to keep a customer happy. They've got to head almost a thousand kilometers to the high Arctic and spend two days moving military training here. We have to deliver the goods so the boys can uh, go out and train. It is vital. It is very, 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 very important. All our eggs are in one basket, and that basket is the Electra. Okay, ready up, left. All right. Off the ramps. If they'd had a backup plane outside, they could have avoided the delay. Okay. And that's part of Joe's bigger problem. He has just one serviceable Electra for freight, and far more work than it can handle. But he's got a plan. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Here, I'll put you on a speakerphone. Hang on, I got Rod with me. What's happening? Mike, how do you put this on a speakerphone? Speaker. Speaker. Are you there now? Where are you? What did you find out about uh, what day the airplane has to leave Coventry? An airline in Coventry, England, has two Electras ready to go up for sale. These airplanes were coming on the market, and I wanted to be uh, the first one to put forward my offer on it. Joe's already planning the flight home. You know, were they thinking of coming straight across, or were they going to go up the north route? Joe, it depends on the winds, to be honest with you, but I suspect we're probably going off. Yeah, I, I was talking to Rod here, and, and uh, of course, the, the thing we'd want first is the engines, and, uh, and and the line items that we use first, uh, you know, like wheels and brakes and stuff that wear out, you know. We got three to four customers now begging for the airplane, and we have one. In all likelihood, I'll be on my way. Okay, Joe. Okay, thanks a lot. We'd love to see you, but if not, we'll do everything uh, by the book for you. But Joe hasn't bought anything yet. Once that airplane is airborne, is now Buffalo Airways. But until then, uh, it's all up for grabs. So just a few hours later, Joe's heading across the pond. This airplane is fully serviceable. It'll come off, off the bag run for your uh, DHL. We'll refuel it and go. What, what, what's your flight time back, you figure? 14 hours. Joe intends to be the first buyer in line. Well, take it easy over there. Don't buy too many planes. Adios. See you later. I'll say hi to Mrs. Winter for you. Well, thank you. These are probably the best electros in the world right now uh, for cargo, because that's what they've been doing for the last 15 years straight. And you know what? They're already green, so. All you gotta do is slap a buffalo sticker on it. But with Joe out of town, Mikey will face a major crisis that threatens the only working Electra they have right now. Up above the Arctic Circle, the Electra crew is closing in on their destination. Uh, buffalo 1119 is turning final for 13 Cambridge Bay. They've flown 850 kilometers northeast here to Cambridge Bay. They'll pick up their first load of military training gear and fly it another 700 kilometers to the remote outpost 
of Resolute Bay. Visual threshold plus two, check. 1100 feet for the visual, check. Okay. We'll be landing, clear down. Landing gear. So, three green. Three green is confirmed. Set fin power, moving. Sixty knots. Check. You got a wind chill of minus forty-five or fifty, and it's pretty chilly. Our day's done. It's been long enough as it is. Hands are getting cold. This morning's holdup has burned up the day. They'll start hauling freight tomorrow. But before Brian and the crew can bunk down for the night, the cold is forcing them into one final task. So the next thing we've done is got to find a warm place for the power unit. Because this hangar is not heated. No. No. Yeah. no. I love this shit. It's going to freeze up here pretty quick. The 5,000 pound cart is a struggle to move, but if it's allowed to freeze up overnight, the crew could be stuck here in the morning. You never know what's going to happen to your airplane. It could be stranded there, and that's the last thing you want. But tomorrow, Ryan will find out that the GPU can cause them much worse trouble than that. It's a new day in the high Arctic outpost of Cambridge Bay. Buffalo's Electra crew need to get started on their delayed mission for the Rangers. But the cold is throwing them a curveball. When it says minus 65 on the windshield, I don't care where you're from, it's freaking cold. Guy? Yeah. <laughs> and today, the victim is the one piece of machinery they struggled to bring here and worked to keep warm. Nothing. This is frozen. The ground power unit crapped out. It just seemed to die. We're not seeing fuel, are we? Starting the plane cold without the power cart will put a major strain on the Electra's complex electronics and instruments. Not even making a bit of smoke. No. Yet. They try and jump start it. They have no idea if the cart can bounce back in this deep freeze. All these lines are dry. Well, I'm beginning to wonder if we don't have a bunch of ice in this line here. It's a diesel engine. So basically, the first thing with diesel is they're really hard to get going. You have to bleed all the injectors and crack all the lines. So we started doing that. OK. After an hour of struggle, the unit finally starts up. Wind it up, Becky. Now that the power is flowing, the Electra can finally take off for Resolute. But the power card is going to cause much bigger issues before the Electra can get back to Yellowknife. In Coventry, England, Buffalo Joe has arrived on British soil, and he's not wasting any time. So what do we do? Just sign this one? OK, Joe, let's sign away. Hey. Excellent. Thank you. Great, Joe. Thank you very much. Super doing business with you. Oh, thank you, guys. You're very kind to me. I haven't left town yet, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. so far you've been nice. <laughs> so I don't know where they are right now. They must be out flying. The planes are out on their final job, so Joe hasn't even had a chance to make an inspection but he has scooped up the prize. He who pays the most wins. It's like an auction. When the hammer comes down, the guy with the biggest bid is the winner. This is going. But now that he's got his planes, Joe wants to add a few extra parts to the deal. Is there a compressor in this one? Seven, seven, one, 
can take that if you want. Yeah, I'm taking it. Let me show you up here. There's a lot of stuff down here. So this stuff from here down, yeah. Yeah. we'll just go down the aisles here. Where is this stuff here? Because there's nothing Joe loves more than getting stuff. You never know what you're going to need, so you take it all. What, these containers? I bet, yeah, I need them, yeah. How many you got here? Uh, a lot. Our philosophy and our success in business has always been we always had lots of parts and pieces for whatever airplane we operate, so we keep them going. This stuff here, what's in this one? And do you have any APUs here? What's this here, propane? You can't say that. Uh, he knows what he wants, and I think he knows how to get it. If you see around here a long ladder, I got to get in this airplane. Oh, I must have my umbrella. Very British now. We want all these torque tubes, cowls, the wheels and brakes, all the flap jacks, all these rails. We want all of that. A little coach around here somewhere right into your office. We'll take the coach out of your office. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. But unless the first plane returns soon, Joe might be stranded. A little bit of a problem there trying to get props, eh? So we're in, in a little bit of a, of a quandary here. Two of the Electra's props are days away from the end of their lifespan. They have either 5,000 hour use or five year use, and the calendar life has come and due. I had to get the airplanes uh, over and, and uh, on Canadian soil. Well, I couldn't wait till the 28th, eh? Because we're, we're done on the end of the month, eh? If we're... Just like Cinderella, at midnight, everything turns back to a pumpkin. Uh, the airplane becomes unserviceable. I got to be back before the end, eh? With an airplane, eh? Joe's window is closing fast. Up in the Arctic, the Electra crew has returned from the first trip to Resolute. Now they're back in Cambridge for another load. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! Did our first trip and came back and we were uh, loading the second trip plus our GPU and... After all the delays so far, Brian needs to make up some lost time. You can probably push it on now. The ground power unit weighs about 5,000 pounds, and it's really awkward. It's not easy to move around. Contact. Well, I'll just get him to lift it straight up. We'll block it. They want to get it in and get going. We should be able to move it, eh? But it's not going to be nearly that easy today. OK, well, <laughs> I'm coming up. So that thing. Hey, hey! Hey! Don't so that thing. Hey, hey! On the ramp in Cambridge Bay, a mission plagued by bad luck has just spiraled into disaster. The power guards are right off. Oh, I mean, the motor separated every time. I mean, when that ground power unit fell off the forklift, it's like someone shot you. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Just, hey, Chuck, just tell them steady back and don't stop. Get fuel spill. <sighs> environmental disaster on our hands. Chuck, we move, we move 400,000 liters of diesel in two weeks, no spill drop. Yeah. The cart is destroyed, and the plane's taken a direct hit. It could have put us out of commission for a long time, because being a pressurized aircraft, there would have had to been a structural repair. On a pressurized plane like the Electra, even a small pinprick can rupture at altitude. Don't go bad on the airplane, that's what you I'll try to call him on his cell. Mike here. 
What's happening? Well, we're in Cambridge Bay. We're loading the last load, and uh, the loader operator dropped the power unit when he was loading it. Well, so sorry. What what, what tipped over? The power unit. It just rolled off the end of the rollers, smashed onto the ground, and uh, uh. came up and. Uh, small dent in the side of the airplane, but it's not punctured through the skin, so we're lucky there. I'm glad no one was under there. Like, that's, that's, someone could have got hurt. Well, if someone would have been under there, they wouldn't have been hurt. They would have been killed. Oh, fine. Anyways, we should be back in Yellowknife by 8 o'clock. Okay, sounds good. I'll make sure that there's uh, people here waiting for you. Talk to you, talk to you. Thanks. Bye. Both Joe and Mikey's brother, Rod, are away. This is all up to Mikey. I don't want to call the old man. Time's in England. They're seven hours ahead. Well, right now, the electric's our number one thing, and uh, it's not going to be the best. Mikey's first priority is dealing with the damage to the airplane. The electric's going to be back at 8 o'clock. They dropped the power cart and put a dent in the airplane. Where on the airplane? Don't know. They just they said, there's a dent, we're coming home, we'll be there at 8 o'clock. We were very lucky to have Mark Bach, who's our metal magician here uh, from Kelowna. The whole company's riding on that airplane. With his sheet metal expert on alert, Mikey now needs to find a new power unit. Hey, Tim, it's Mikey. What do you guys have there for a power cart? Nothing, eh? It means getting on the phone and finding a GPU at all costs. How much do they run? Probably, you might be able to get one for 15 grand if you're lucky. Oh, frick. Mikey needs to make a deal and get a cart shipped to town. Hey, Byron, this is our spare one? Because Buffalo's oh, only backup is in very oh. rough shape. Is this one ever being fired up? No, uh, this thing has a ransom to be out it. Buffalo Junkyard provided us with a GPU, just not a working GPU. Mike here, they got one. So we still had to get one out of uh, Calgary to get it here as soon as we can. We need price and dimension. Because if, it, if it's too big, then it's useless. Uh, ideally, if it could fit in a DC-3, like I don't know how big these new modern ones are. And until Mikey gets one, the company's only real moneymaker won't be flying. How do I get to that airplane over there? At the Coventry Airport, Joe's ready to bring home his new Electra, which could help solve Buffalo's problem. But the new Electra isn't ready for Joe. When you're in Rome, do the Romans do. So he's killing time at a very unique diner, inside a retired DC-6. It's a life for an airplane, but I don't know. Well, I guess it's better than being some pop cans. It's, it's, it's serving a life that a lot of people can go in there and reminisce. The restaurant is also part museum, with its cockpit intact and an old pilot's uniform on display. Get rid of my Canadian clothes and put on my English clothes. Get my tunic on. Last time I wore a uniform was 1969. I thought I'd put this uniform on and strut around and see if I changed. There, there's how we looked at the time, and this is uh, the type of airplane I was flying at the time. This is how we took command of the airplane. So here we are. We'll hang up the microphone because I certainly don't want to talk to anybody. When I get back to Canada, I'll get all the boys dressed like this. We'll be taking these uniforms back. And Joe has to get back to Buffalo with his new Electra fast before the propellers expire in just two days. In Cambridge Bay, the mechanics are doing one last check on the dented hull. Me and Chuck did an inspection on the side of the fuselage. Thank God it didn't puncture the skin. We deemed it safe to fly, but it's always on your mind. You know, you, you shouldn't be flying around with dents and stuff like that. Somehow, the impact hasn't pierced the metal, but there could still be serious damage to the metal skeleton underneath. Damage they won't be able to check until they get the plane home. Four engines clear. If the frame is bent, this could be the workhorse's last flight for weeks or even months. Okay, everybody ready to go? Okay.
Cut the power, let me face. Oh. Sixty knots. V one. Okay. Rotation. Hey, the gear is up. Flaps up. All the crew wants right now is an uneventful trip home. Oh, we're airport at one five. Everything was going good and all that. We leveled off in about an hour or so out of Cambridge. Whoa! Okay, uh, engine failure number two engine. Just flamed out. Oh, well, we're airborne at one five. Whoa! Okay, uh, engine failure number two engine. Just flamed out. Brian Harrison and the electric crew have no idea why their engine has suddenly died. What the f happened there? It was quite a surprise that it, that it quit and just, just quit. I mean, there was no warning or anything. It was just like somebody turned off a switch. If the blades catch the wind, they can create so much drag, the plane will be impossible to control. So engineer Luby Lubosch acts fast. The rotation has stopped. On the lecture, there's four E-handles, one for every engine. You pull this handle, and it shuts down the engine, feathers it, and secures it, basically. It takes care of one shot. Thank you for doing that, Luby. The plane should be OK, as long as the three remaining engines keep working. But without knowing why number two stopped, the crew has no guarantee that the problem won't strike the other engines. Uh, crew briefing. Well, we've had an engine failure. Let's complete the uh, engine failure checklist. As soon as AJ uh, informed me that the engine was shut down, I jumped in my truck. I drove to the end of the tarmac just to see if they're OK. A lot of times, it's just something stupid. Well, that's one of But it, you don't just shut down a turbine. You know, a shutdown can be something super simple, or it can be something very, very drastic. So is that there? Yeah, I think so. They're going to land this way, figure it out. Yeah. One two three Yellow Lake Radio, Roger Active Runway One Six, Wind at One Three Zero at Nine, Altimeter Two Nine Zero Seven Five. Ground speed. Hey, you are grounding Ninety Five. That's a pretty wicked approach. Here's down Hundred Twelve Seven. That's confirmed. Zero. Pushing on the outboard zone. Okay. Three lights. Buffalo 112 tower, exit to the end. Taxi motor 12 decimal line, getting back to company number. They've landed safely, but Mikey's staring down a growing pile of serious problems. Open the doors up! Uh, we have a dent in the airplane, we have a bus up power cart, and we have a blown engine. Uh, and that's more snags we've had in the whole month than we've had in one trip, so we don't know what's what yet. The car has left the bottom half. Did it come right apart? Basically, yeah. I got a power cart coming in from Calgary. Okay, well, I'll get this in the hangar. Jesus Christ, just missed that nice big repair, yeah. dude. I'd be thankful that's all it is, though. You're lucky that there's not a great big gaping door here. Until the mechanics can get a look under the skin, there's no telling how deep the damage goes. And there's an even more immediate concern. I don't know why. I've never seen an engine just quit like that. Do I? The engine stopped instantly. Well, what do you see? Nothing, really. Oh. Right yeah, I see the oil peeking over oh, there. Look at the thing, it's not lined up, it's moved, it's busted. I see all the oil peeking over there. We gotta get rid of this engine, man. The problem is still a mystery, but this engine has been shaking so badly, there's no way they can keep it on the plane. This engine's starting to give us signs, eh? Well, I, I know, I know it is. So, happens. we're better off to get rid of it. Well, yeah, that's, that's oh. your guys' call. Follow. I'm calling it? Yep. I'm gonna pull the engine. It's a vibrator. 
We're better off the bullet. We've got all our eggs in this basket, and this basket right now is grounded. There she is. I thought I heard it come in last night about 11, 10 or something. Over in England, Joe's finally getting a look at his newest Electra. She was hauling cargo last night, eh? Yep. When it finished doing its runs, it landed in coverage and the airplane was turned over to me. And he can't afford to waste a minute. Two's all clear. Start two, we ready, please. Joe's company needs a new Electra like never before. But tomorrow afternoon, his plane will be grounded. Yeah, there was a, a time frame I was racing, yeah. While the Electra warms up, Joe gets a call from home. Yeah, Mike. Hey, Dad. How you going? I'm fine. Going OK. What do you mean it's going OK? It must be something happening. Well, the Electra, they, uh, in Cambridge Bay, they dropped the power unit off the forklift and it uh, hit the side of the airplane. They dropped our power card against our airplane? Yep. OK, so how else is it going there? <laughs> right on the way home, they blew uh, the engine two. So just everything kept, kept on piling up there last night. Of course, my father's worried. You know, he's got his multi-million dollar airplane. He's got hit. So how would anyone react? But uh, you know, it was honestly, there's nothing for him to do, and he had to leave it for us to figure out how to fix it. I see. Joe's trip home just got even more urgent. We're just getting this airplane loaded. I got to get over there. Mikey's having problems. Uh, that forklift hit his airplane, so I got to get going. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. We're going to. Part is fixed right now. The trip will be Joe's first ever in an Electra, riding along with two British pilots. Right, ready. Ready? Left your eight, ready for departure. Big lights out. Right, sir. Right. They'll be flying the northern route, touching down for fuel in Keflavik, Iceland, and then Iqaluit in Nunavut, before heading to Buffalo's maintenance hangar in Red Deer, Alberta. So it's cleared Keflavik. After three hours in the air, Joe's crew descends toward the Keflavik airport. Uh, Joe wants this fuel stop to be quick. But Buffalo's bad luck has caught up with the boss. We've got a big hole in the spinner. How big a hole? Is that the hole in the front, or is it talking about another hole? <laughs> it's not the hole that's meant to be there. How big a hole do you mean? <laughs> Doesn't matter how big it is, it shouldn't be there. It? What, what, uh, what engine you on? Fist. What is it, Joe? Looks like it suffered some heat. The heating element built into the nose cone, or spinner, is burnt out. That puts the engine at big risk. Can you fly it that way to clean it up? Not into icing. No ice. Okay. It will get covered in ice, and that could disrupt the airflow into the intake or go down the intake itself, and the engine will be damaged or could stop, stop working completely. And an extra spinner is the one spare Joe didn't grab. We had a chance to put them all on. Yeah. <laughs> There's six of them. And I put them back. Cheers, bud. God, it's coming. It's coming. So it's possible. Joe and his plane are stuck in Iceland until another spinner arrives from Coventry. And he's got just over a day before the props run out and the Electra is forbidden from flying. God damn. 
on the western coast of Iceland. Buffalo Joe is taking in the sights. Transportation downtown reclamation. He said it has to do some exercise, but this is it. He's trying to make the most out of being stranded with his new Electra. <laughs> That's Ray Jane Zinger. Vinegar. That's Ray and Jane's vinegar. That's what that says. We put that on that vinegar on pressure. Look at that size of that ship. Here we go again. Back home, the crew's dealing with another Electra that's still stuck on the ground. Jeez, it's good. My brain's kind of scattered right now. I'm just trying to figure out all the logistics of all the stuff that, that's happening here. I didn't have a choice. I didn't say, you can handle a rod, you can handle dad. Problem number one, the blown engine. We've got to find out what's wrong with this one. Because we don't know what shut it down. It could be the wiring harness, it could be anything. I'm changing change it. Yes. It'll be faster for Chuck to put on a new engine than to diagnose the problem. But Chuck will need help. When I arrived, Chuck was working by himself, and that's not fair. Where's all these people? There's many people you can get in here because right now I got nobody. Chucky's uh he, he, you know, it's his airplane. He's uh, he's under, you know, a bunch of pressure and a bunch of stress to get it ready. So I was going to make sure I could get enough people to help him. So Mikey recruits help from around the hangar and even lends a hand himself. Let's get together. Let's work together. Let's get this engine off and get out back in here. See, the reason why we're going to change this engine is because we could spend like two to three days just troubleshooting it and not finding it. Oh, of course. You know, sometimes at Buffalo Airways, we're not the most efficient people in the world, but when uh, push comes to shove, there's no stopping us. Good enough. Let's go get the other one. Are you driving there? Or? The key to the fast switchover is a pre built replacement known as a quick engine change kit or QEC. Yeah, this is how they do it at Boeing. The Electra's top engineer, Luby Lubosch, makes sure there are always QECs ready in case of an emergency. Let's not f around, let's get her on. So Luby had basically built up a QEC and had it almost ready to hang. We rolled it out, jam the new one on, and you know, run it. That saved like two or three days right there. Oh, Luby's little Luby kits are lifesavers. I've seen engine changes take six, seven days. Beautiful. That would have really not been good for us if that would have happened, but it, it went very smoothly. It was awesome. While Chuck and the mechanics pull off the dead engine, sheet metal expert Mark Botch finds out how badly the Electra got hit. How's it looking there, Mark? Oh, not bad. It could have been worse. Yeah, so I'm gonna just cut it back here somewhere. Let's place this piece of skin. How long do we have time for repair? Uh, I'll be done today. That's fresh. For the first time in 24 hours, Mikey gets some good news. That stringer's okay, right? Yeah. The fear was this is the skin and this is the bone, right? So do you get a cut? You can put a band-aid on it. We break the bone, you gotta put a cast on it. Sometimes you got no luck, and sometimes all you have is luck. This is an outpatient, not an inpatient, so luckily we're gonna get her done and get her out of here. That's good. That'll be good. Come on. The repairs are on the fast track, but even that won't matter until Mikey's new power cart arrives at the hangar. It's a new morning in Keflavik, and Joe's got a new setback. Yeah, wait for Christopher to release it, yeah? Well, he's trying to get his parts out of uh, customs. Of course, it's Sunday, and no matter how hard you try, there's always more paperwork needed. The old nose cone is off, and the prop is ready. But if Joe can't get the new one on today, 
his Electra won't be going anywhere. At the Keflavik Airport in Iceland, Buffalo Joe might finally be on the move. Finally here. It's all part of the adventure of traveling home. Imagine how boring it would be if life was simple and everything worked. Customs has released his replacement spinner, and the mechanics are fitting it into place. As long as the final legs of the trip stay free of any more problems, Joe is on schedule to make it home before his props expire. Hours later, back in Yellowknife, very good. They are. Great bunch of guys. It's awesome to see. The crew is putting the finishing touches on the repair job. Picasso couldn't do any better. <laughs> Out on the ramp, the morning freighter is on the way in from Hay River. With a very important piece of cargo, the new ground power unit that was trucked up from Alberta last night. And the crew's being very careful. Straight down, not hill. Straight down. Go faster, man. A little bit faster. Hey, Brian, let's get her out of here. Welcome to You know, within the span of 24 hours, a new GPU, new skin, new engine, and the airplane better off than it was 24 hours ago. We missed the day, but we're going to gain that back. It's going to work twice as hard. Good to go. All they got to do is lower down and get out of here. Everything's cool with the engine, so uh, here we go. Off to Resolute Bay, back in business. You know, immensely proud of the air crew, the ground crew. Everybody worked around the clock and got the airplane back going. And before we knew it, before even my father was back, we had the airplane back in the air and, and the customer is starting to get his loads. The next morning, Mikey arrives in Alberta for a reunion. Radio, hello. Rocky Electra, positioning visually for runway 16. Joe's beaten his deadline with only a few hours to spare. We have parked right here. This is my hangar. Oh, okay. Set raises to Buffalo. Okay. So what we'll do is go off the end. He's got his new plane and some newfound respect for his son, Mikey. The incident happened, and he had uh, re reacted to it, and, and he had solved the problem. Mikey's like that. He, he can take care of things if, uh, if he's left to it. 